This one's called The Girl in Gold Boots. And there is, in fact, a girl in gold boots, and there's plenty of girls in silver boots as well. And uh, I think one of the finest things about this episode is you'll find that Crow himself dons some gold boots and does one of the most disturbing dances in MST history. I was just happy to see that for once it wasn't me squeezing into little gold lame shorts and dancing around myself, which I've done, even uh, at home as well. So uh, please enjoy the girl in gold boots, and especially enjoy the little icky elf guy. We still do that around with all the MST cast. We still occasionally refer to each other as uh, uh, Yak Boy. So look for that and enjoy. Hi, Mike Nelson here. Uh, this one is called Hamlet. Maybe you're familiar with this little play. We were very, very excited to finally be able to do the greatest drama in, in world history until we found out it was a dreary black and white dubbed German version starring Maximilian Schell. Then despair set in, a despair almost as bad as Hamlet himself had. But uh, I think you'll enjoy this version of Hamlet um, coming up right now. Enjoy. Hi, Mike Nelson here. This is the DVD containing the famous Overdrawn at the Memory Bank with the late, great Raul Julia, who uh, really, really should be embarrassed about this uh, performance. I remember we had deep, deep pain over this videotaped movie, which was shot, I believe, for uh, public television, which should also be ashamed. So uh, sit back and enjoy Overdrawn at the Memory Bank. Hi, Mike Nelson here. This one's called Space Mutiny, which, if you haven't seen it, it's hard to figure out what the mutiny exactly is, although there are a lot of men driving around in golf carts, and there's a beefy guy who kisses sort of an older woman who could be his mother, which is kind of weird. And uh, I remember we were very, very amused by the fact that the big beefy guy screamed like a woman several times during this thing, which was very, very odd. And uh, you'll also enjoy Calgon, the skinny-faced man who sweat a lot and had greasy hair. It's always a good performance choice. So please, enjoy this without sweating or getting greasy hair. The Legend of Boggy Creek 2. You would think it was actually the second in the Boggy Creek series, but that's wrong. It's the third. There was another Legend of Boggy Creek 2, but apparently it just fell off the edge of the earth. So they just called this one The Legend of Boggy Creek 2, hoping no one would notice. At least that's what I've heard. And uh, unfortunately, no one noticed this film either. But we noticed the huge and upsetting shorts that the lead character wears. And I think you'll be very, very horrified by that. In comparison, the uh, monster himself, who's actually you know, fairly well done, big ape man who terrorizes the, the community, is not half as scary as the guy who wears the overalls with only one strap and is smeared with his own offal. That's very, very disturbing. So please. Enjoy The Legend of Boggy Creek 2, which is actually 3. Hi. This one's called Merlin's Shop of Mystical Wonders, which makes it sound like a fun, happy, mystical, Christmas, kids' time, fun, story time thing, which it's not. It's like there's Satan all over the thing. We were a little disturbed by that because uh, Ernest Borgnine tells these stories, apparently, to this little child, and we were terrified of it. And it's also really, really bad, which, make, which makes it, you know, twice as scary. But uh, I think you'll enjoy the wisecracking for Merlin's Shop of Mystical Wonders. This next one is called Time Chasers. We were very excited to do Time Chasers because the filmmakers themselves, it was a small group of people, as I think it'll be obvious to you as you watch it, they contacted us and were very excited because they were fans of Mystery Science. And in fact, when the show premiered, they had a party. And we talked to all the people beforehand, especially one of the characters, the little guy with the mustache. I don't remember his name, but you'll see him. He, uh, he was very excited. And they had a party. And they showed the movie. And then we talked to the guy after that. And things weren't so good anymore. Apparently, they didn't think we would actually savage the film. Uh, maybe they thought we would say, wow, this is a great <laughs> film. But, it didn't happen that way, and apparently the party was kind of a downer. So to all of those people who are involved in Time Chasers, I'm sorry. But not sorry enough that you aren't going to enjoy this little savaging of Time Chasers. This one's called A Touch of Satan, which, you know, they, they couldn't afford, apparently, a big bowl of Satan for the, for the budget. So they just got A Touch of Satan. But because this is sort of a creepy 70s movie, to me it appeared that there was far more than just a touch of Satan. So you actually get a little more than your money's worth on this movie. Um, please enjoy the, uh, uh, the creepy woman with sort of the, 
the hair that looks like a bowl, but half a bowl, and then two things that come down, who says, Jody, a lot in a whiny voice. It's very disturbing, and I think that's where Satan comes in. So enjoy this, A Touch of Satan. This one's called...